Ah, girl. <clears throat> ah. Whoa. This apparatus that I'm hooking up to here is a, an invention for 2021. I needed a way to get my sap out of the woods and Amy being kind of heavy and full, I wanted to give them as much advantage as I could for not having the extra weight. Step up here, girl. <clears throat> so by using a kind of a hybrid vehicle with um, wheels in the back and the sled runners in the front it was uh it worked out fantastic but the best part of all my grandfather had a vehicle like this and i really don't remember all the details but i'm going to give him all the credit um, the thought was that it would make it easy to get on and off for putting sap on which didn't seem to matter because the tank's low enough we can reach it from the side anyways um, but the cool thing about it, and it was kind of an unexpected thing, is no matter where I land on my unloading hill, which if you can turn, Joe, and see the end of the sugar house, the, no matter where I land on my unloading hill, the tank is always pointed down, so I get it empty every single time. Which, of course, you want to empty the sap out, but the most important time is that last part of the day when, if you don't get it all out, now you have the potential to freeze in that tank. And I also want the tank emptied and rinsed out before we gather it the second time. So that was an unexpected bonus. And even though it looks severe, it's only four and a half inches from the back of the tank to the front of the tank. So I could level it if at some point we decide to. And at this point, for me, the jury's still out because I only use this for sap. But having said that, I can see potential that it could be a great chore cart or a firewood thing. I mean, it's just very handy. Um, it, it's set up so that it has a fifth wheel-like attachment underneath the bobsled. So the fifth wheel gives you a turning radius that's almost in its own footprint. Um, I kind of got the idea from the dump wagon that we use, but it, it works out extremely well. The other thing I did is I put high-density plastic on the bottom of the runner, of the, on the wood, so the high density plastic uh, makes it slide super easy and it's very wear resistant. I can step the horses up and- I can see it. Okay. Um, it's very wear resistant. So I'm thinking I'll get three years out of that. It cost me 75 bucks for the two pieces of plastic, which seems extreme, but if all I have to do is replace the plastic every three years and the sled continues to last, uh, I'm pretty impressed. This is the sled, uh, some of our viewers may remember, I had a long-tailed sap sled that I used and really liked that sled. I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna compare the two because it's, uh, both of them have different jobs, but the main thing is it's, the wheelbase is longer so you don't get your face washed every time you're going through the woods with a load of sap. The wheel vehicle, especially in this year when it was so dry, it, it definitely made the difference. Um, most of our time this year we gathered between six and 800 gallons of sap every time we gathered. So that's four or five trips, you know, between four trips, we had five one time. Um, and my woods is a long, narrow strip, so it's a long way out and a long way back in. So giving the horses a mechanical advantage really made a difference. And I'm just gonna take this out and make a couple loops to show you how maneuverable it is. And um, I'm, I'm kind of excited because it works so well. Jeep. Quit. Jeep. Easy. Jeep. Whoop. Jeep. And you can see even on the gravel it slides very nice. It's just, it's extremely handle and it's 
no load for the horses. There's just a tiny bit of friction, but it pulls really easy. <clears throat> ha, girls. Ha. Ha. Come on. Easy. Easy. Easy, Ab. Easy. At a girl. Easy girl. Whoa. They didn't exactly like that because they can't figure out where are we going. <laughs> they do love their routine. Um, I'll talk a tiny bit about this um, platform we did, we used. Everything here was mostly all farm junk that we just transformed into this piece of equipment. Um, the blocks on here are where my tank sits. Uh, I'm going to go with a different tank next year, just that's a whole other story. But, um, but again, it's real easy and those would just pop off if you wanted to use it for a platform. Um, the only other thing I would add is some safety in here. My foot doesn't go through, but I'm afraid of a child getting his leg down in there. So that's going to change. But these are, so when you're going through the woods, if you get up against a tree, it pushes you over. And we have a few spots where <clears throat> they definitely made all the difference because it would be pretty easy to get stuck. The steps in the back are not necessary, but what I found out by accident was <clears throat> if you start to make ruts, which we only had two places we made any ruts, these steps actually help flatten, their, flatten them back out. And a guy could probably go at it and make like a V with steel underneath it, four or five inches, so it's kind of tucked up and out of the way, but then that V would fill the ruts in as the center of your road got high, it would help push it out. Um, and then maybe improvements we add at some point, but for now, um, for the first time out of the box, we're pretty satisfied that it worked good for us. What do you call it? <clears throat> uh, I just call it a sap rig, but uh, I suppose it needs a name, but my grandfather's name was Vaughn, so I don't know if I can work that into the name or not. <laughs> Ooh. Although... His middle name was Bradley, and I know there's a Bradley tank, so it may work. <laughs> oh, babe. It definitely is. It's, I can't, like I said, I can't take credit for it. It's not my own invention. It was my grandfather's and a very distant memory. But uh, you can kind of imagine if you were turned around backwards and Grandpa spoke to the horses, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you'll find it in that book. <laughs> Um, we have started bolting them on, um, and that is just one of those things is so has everybody else because thank goodness Brian was forward enough and humble enough to share that. A lot of people realize, oh, that could be a disaster. And uh, so, so every time I go to get one, they're either out or almost out. <clears throat> so instead of buying all the, every single one, I just have been slowly replacing them. And I think we have... Uh, <clears throat> Just three or four things that are left that don't have them bolted on. And this uh, this tongue, all the hardware, I've forged in my own forge and put on. So, And I kept it purposely short so you can get around good in the woods. Um, and having said that, this one probably needs one bolted on more than any other piece of equipment we use because it is shorter. So definitely, uh, it's in the works. Come up here, babies. Come up here. Ooh. Like I said, it's maybe it's ego that prevented me in the beginning. I'm like, oh, for crying out loud, I know what I'm doing. But there are things you learn that just make good sense. And trust me, this makes very good sense. You've also talked about how because we do a lot of filming and you, your pictures end up in the magazine, how I, you are kind of a, an example. Well, absolutely. Not only to my kids and my grandchildren, but there are people who maybe haven't done this before or haven't done much of it before. And if one thing I do sets an example that other people can learn from, then it's worth it. And if you prevent one accident, oh my goodness, it's definitely worth it. So I, I just... 
you know, I just, I'm humbled by it. And uh, quite frankly, doing sap this year, this thing slipped off the end of the tongue. And it, had it not been for that, we probably would have been in a pretty bad way because we were in a pretty rough pull. And if you notice, Amy was rubbing a little hair off on her britching right here on her butt. And so I said, oh, geez, you know, maybe I, so I let up one link. And that was just the difference that allowed that. When they get that hard pull, it popped it off. And so I got up here to the sugar house hill, and I'm like, that thing's not going up the hill right. So I was, I was unloading the sap. I walked around in front, and literally right there, I thank God that that strap was on there because, man, that could have been so bad. I had a young neighbor boy helping me. Lord knows where he would have, might have wound up out there. But, uh, I mean, good horses are going to help you. But when uh, something goes bad like that, all the training in the world probably isn't going to be enough.